so where would you say the media landscape is headed? Can you give me some predictions for the next three to five years? So I think my, you know, my top lead story is I think, um, you know, other than the power of Disney and certain brands that are out there, um, I think it becomes about the power of the content and the individual show uh, and the individual pieces of content. We, we end up in the television world in a linear and a library world and television and the internet, it, it's, it's combined, right? It, you know, whether it's because of a smart device or, you know, an OTT device or a Chrome stick or whatever the case may be, you look at live which is your sports, which is why sports rights leagues deals are going so you know high. Uh, it's live reality television where you want to be tweeting and you want to have that social experience as sort of that second category. And everything else is available on a drop-down menu where you can pick whatever you want. And if you happen to be catching up on Breaking Bad, that's great. Or if it's the newest CW shows like Jane the Virgin, you can pick those up as well. So I definitely see, and it was interesting, I was um, part of an IBM white paper 10 years ago that talked about that the model would be charging by the bytes of the content that you consumed and you would have it, if you were picking it up on a big screen, it would be charged at one price and if you're picking it on a wearable or a tablet, it would be a different price. And I don't know that it's that crazy, but it is a model where, um, you know, my son who's a you know, happens to be a bicycling fan and happens to be, you know, at Chicago in, in university. If he wants to watch the Tour de France, it's two ninety nine. He pulls it down on a screen and he's not on versus and it's a different world and you have that equity and that's, you know, where I see the world going. And our challenge is to figure out how to, how to connect the brands to that uh, and, and stay relevant, uh, you know, from that standpoint. So Mark, where do you see the future for traditional television, particularly in the revenue model? So I think it'll probably mirror a little bit what happened in the music business, right? So in the music business, what was really interesting is, again, growing up, dating yourself a little bit, you know, you discovered, you know, the back end of the album, you discovered side B, you figured out other songs you wanted, you didn't just buy the one hit on the Katy Perry album that you really wanted, that was getting a lot of airplay. So I think the the networks are going to have a really big challenge you know, to create hits, to create franchises, to create reasons to come to that channel uh, and watch. And what is really going to be a challenge is the stuff that's not um, strong. And how do they get advertising and you know, connectivity to that and viewership to that is going to be their biggest challenge because we've come to um, a place in the world where at least from one man's opinion, um, branding is really critical and being part of the water cooler talk and saying, did I see Mad Men or Breaking Bad? Did I watch you know, the Patriots game this weekend? You know, did I see what went on The Bachelor? Did I talk to this really cool you know, YouTube star A or B? Is part of what um, is, is socially connecting the world. So the ancillary side B of the album doesn't really matter anymore. It's just what's on side A, particularly as I tell my staff all the time, even though, you know, it, it, it's we live in a world of Twitter, Snapchat, and the fastest, you know, experiences in the world. So people make a very quick decision on the pieces of content they want, and the challenges the network will have is they're programming in theory for 24 hours. So that most out-of-the-box thinking is probably that, you know, they may not be programming for 24 hours anymore, and they have to have a different set of hours um, so that they're not just wasting a lot of airspace.